This video accompanies physical geography assignment number one and should give you some idea of how to complete the assignment. If you have any questions about the assignment, you can ask me, you can follow up in class, whatever you feel comfortable with. Before I start talking about the assignment and how to complete it, I first wanted just to draw your attention to the fact that if you click into the physical geography assignment, you are going to find that there is a rubric here. And if you click on that rubric, you will get a sense of what is required of you for the assignment. And I wanted to point out in particular that there's a range of scores that you can get. Um, the very low score, insufficient, always nets you a zero in these areas. And that's a bit of a nudge for me telling me, telling you that I want you to redo the assignment. I also wanted to point out that exceptional is really granted for people who go the extra mile. So you can complete the assignment and do very, very well in it and not score a perfect score. And that's actually by design. So there's the assignment. Um, the assignment is actually going to require you to use Google Earth, as well as find a map on the USGS Map Store, which I'll get to in a little bit. So here's Google Earth, and you should be familiar with it and its use if you aren't already. You should be using Google Earth Pro, which is the version that you download onto your desktop, um, onto your um, computer rather than using it as a mobile app. So here's Google Earth Pro, which says it in the upper left-hand corner, and it's distinct from the various mobile apps because it doesn't have, it has these layers and the mobile apps do not. There's another version of Google Earth that can be found on a web browser as well, and it's very good, and it's getting to the point where in a few years it's going to replace Google Earth Pro, which is this application that you actually load onto your computer, but it's not quite there yet. So we are still going to be using Google Earth Pro. And there are all sorts of different things you can do with it to explore the world, and I'm sure most of you have done this. A couple of noteworthy tools that you have um, on here, a lot of these tools up here we're going to be talking about as the course proceeds. Uh, but over here, um, this little button or slider allows you to zoom in or to zoom out. When we click on this compass rose right here, we can scooch to the west or to the east or to the south or to the north. The function up here allows us to pan so that we can see panoramic images in Google Earth. And let me actually demonstrate that by going to a particular place. I'm going to go to a place called Calico. Creek, Alaska, and this is located in Denali National Park. I'm going to type it in here, and then I'm going to click search, and it will take me right down there. It will also drop a little place mark that shows where that is located. I'm actually going to turn that place mark off by clicking this button right here that says clear search results. So that's gone. And where we are actually is the upper Teklanika River, um, which is in the backcountry in Denali National Park. And I can use this function over here to actually pan the map so that I can see it in three dimensions. And you can see I've sort of zipped along here and then zipped up here. And as I do this, I can actually see the landscape in a 3D relief something that I was unable to do before. You might have to experiment with this. You can also access this all through your mouse. And so here I'm zooming in and out and also panning the map and rotating it back and forth by depressing the mouse here. So there are a lot of different things that you can do with this. Um, after you have positioned Google Earth to a place that you like in a region you would like to explore, I would like you to capture this image. Now, let me start off by saying that you don't have to do an Alaska place. In fact, I would encourage you to go to the outside and pick some place in the lower 48 or in Hawaii. Um, I have chosen to do an Alaska one simply because I went backpacking here this summer and thought it was a pretty cool place. After you have found the view that you would like to see it in Google Earth, what I want you to do is I want you to go to File, and then I want you to Save, 
and I want you to save the image. And when you save the image, you're going to click up here on this button, but you'll notice that the map options include a place to put a legend and a title and that sort of things. I usually turn those off. Um, I keep the scale and the compass rows on. Um, I don't want to save this map configuration. That is something that is entirely different from the image itself. So I can just click off to the side of that. And now I have a little picture of the upper Teklanika River and it includes a north arrow here and also a little scale bar too. I can click Save Image, and now it's going to ask me where I'd like to save that, and you can save it someplace convenient on your desktop or some other place where you'll be able to find it. So now we have taken a look at some part of the United States that we want to through Google Earth. The next thing that I would like you to do is look at a topographic map of that same particular area. And you're going to do that by going to the USGS Map Store. And you just type in USGS Store, and you will come to this page. You want to click on the Map Locator tool. And then when you're there, you want to type in the same thing you did in Google Earth. And I'm going to type in Calico Creek, Alaska. And sometimes this takes a little bit of time um, to bring up the results and to bring up the right result. But if you work with it a little bit, you should be able to find it. And you'll see now that I've reached a map that shows the same location that I had before. I can zoom into this map to make sure that I'm in that right location if I want to, but it's dropped a little pin exactly where I was before. Over here, you can choose what kind of map you'd like to look at. If you are in the lower 48 or Hawaii, you should probably stick with the 7.5 um, size of map. That is 7.5 minutes that it is covering. But I'm actually going to choose the map that is 1 to 62,000 instead for that area. It's actually 1 to 63,000 in Alaska, but it, it's good enough. And then once I've chosen um, whatever scale of map that I want, I can click on this little cursor that's been dropped here and click on View Products and it will bring up products that I am able to look at and then select. And you'll see that a number of maps have popped up here, including actually a bunch of maps that are at the 1 to 24,000 or 25,000 scale. But the one that I actually want to look at is a 15 by 15 um, quadrangle at the 1, 000, 1 to 63,360 size. Um, I'm going to then say view to that. And it's going to bring up the map, could be a little bit slow depending on what your collection is or what your connection is, but it's going to bring it up um, onto your computer and you will be able to take a look at this map. And what it's going to be is a contour line map. And what a contour line map is a map that allows us to um, Oop, I think it's actually already downloaded it up here. It's a map that allows us to look at the topography of the map, much like we looked at the topography on Google Earth, but instead it uses little brown lines or contour lines to do that. So now I've clicked on that map to bring it up, and this is the part that might take a little bit of time. Um, and if I zoom in and out of this map, which I can do in my web browser, by clicking that little plus sign right here, um, you can see these little brown lines. Um, they show us the elevation of areas. We'll talk a little bit about them in class. There's also a symbol for vegetation, for rivers. There will be vegetations for glaciers if you're in Alaska, and a number of different things, including roads. This is the Denali Highway right here, um, and other features that have been made by humans. What I'd like you to do in this assignment, so if we go back to the assignment right here, um, I, is I'd like you to compare Google Earth as a geographic tool for allowing us to understand and look at the landscape and a topographic map. And I'd like you to tell me which you like better, what you find to be a stronger tool, and what some of the both pluses and minuses are for both of these tools. I'd also like you to include a copy of the map that you downloaded, um, as well as the Google Earth image that you saved, and attach those to the assignment so that I can take a look at them. 
So if you have any questions whatsoever, please let me know. I am happy to help you.